This video is dedicated to you folks out there who are using the Carter 2BBD. You may have the feedback version, you may not have the feedback version. So this typically is going to apply to you Jeep folks out there. The problem is, is that it's getting colder outside and you may be having difficulty starting or keeping the initial idle on the car when it's cold. Once it warms up, no problem. That typically falls down to misadjustment of the choke plate. There is an initial choke setting that the vehicle tries to sustain before the electric automatic choke takes over. Most people get so fed up with this that they just remove the electric choke completely in favor of putting a manual choke in. But let's say that you're an individual like me where I don't believe that is the solution. So, there are many questions about this here and AMC's own TSM is kind of mysterious about this. But the first thing we wanna do is that we want to make sure that our entire choke linkage is clean or has been cleaned and is ready to go. So you will notice here that we have in the full open position, the lever inside, the half moon is facing upwards. When we put our plate on, we have this hole here, which is centering on the hole here for one of the screws that holds the housing to the carburetor. And this has, a full range, this has a full range of travel from here across. We have a single gasket. And this is the electric choke itself. Some people call it the electric choke thermostat housing. Sometimes they just call it the electric choke housing. So it's a bimetallic strip in here that DC power travels through this and it grounds the carburetor housing through tabs on either side. It says lean somewhere on it. But this one here specifically is made by Carter. The aftermarket ones, I'm not entirely sure about where the terminal is, but what we wanna do is that with the vehicle and the housing cooled off to ambient temperatures and like it hasn't been operated in hours, um, we can make this adjustment. So as you can see with the terminal at the 12 o'clock position, there is where the coil sits inside. So I'm gonna to go to the nine o'clock position and I will put on the housing cover. Now before you even got this off if it was already installed you may have had to deal with these security screws that some regions require. Um, the instructions are to grind a slot through them and remove them with the screwdriver and then when replacing them either use new security screw heads or just use regular flathead screws. If you're going from a carburetor rebuild kit, I do believe the Echlin kits come with both. There. So now we have this assured, it's clean, everything's set up inside of it, and we're good to go. So let's bring it to the 12 o'clock position, and let's start with the adjustment instructions. The first is to keep these three screws loosened and rotate it to the quarter turn rich position. What the heck is that? Some people say that there's a notch or a mark because if you look on the casting of the electric choke housing, we have a bunch of small little marks, a large mark right there, and a bunch of small ones there, and you have to line up a mark on the side of the housing. You do, but not yet because these new housings or a housing that's never been messed with doesn't have any notches or marks on it already. So what we're gonna do is just take it and rotate it to the three o'clock position. And now we can tighten one screw just to hold it in place. Now let's go to the other side of the carburetor and I'm just gonna crack the throttle here a little bit and then the fast idle cam will go into the fast idle position. There we go. We are now ready to set the vacuum pull-off clearance. To do that, we require a vacuum pump, a hand pump for that one there. If you look underneath the carb, we have a single vacuum line that comes out from this port and goes into the diaphragm. I'm gonna unplug it from the diaphragm. I'm gonna take my vacuum pump here and plug that in. You will apply 20 inches of vacuum mercury. There we go or 20 inches of mercury vacuum, there we go. If it starts leaking down, double check all of your hoses. If it continues to leak down, your diaphragm is leaking. Replace the diaphragm. Now, 
what you need to do is set the initial opening clearance right here. Because the idea is that if this is too far closed, it's going to be too rich. And if it's too far open, it's going to be too lean. It wants to be at an ideal position. Within AMC's TSM, or Technical Service Manual, it does specifically tell you the initial choke valve clearance. The set to is 0 0.140 inches for the 8338 and 8339 Carter 2 BBDs. The okay range is 0 0.125 to 0 0.155. There's a bunch of little gauges that you use to set this initial pull-off clearance. I don't have any of those it's entirely possible you don't have them as well. So what I want you to do is get yourself your digital calipers and go into your pile of nails. You may have to clean your nails a little bit to do this, but we're looking for a nail that's within that okay range. This one here sets to 0 0.146 and maintains that throughout the length that we need to use it for measuring. So I'm going to put that in here and because this is so far rich, I can actually hold it in place. And now you'll go with a pair of pliers and this linkage right here to the pull-off, it just wants you to twist it and bend it so you can open it or close it a little bit. So I'm gonna hold this here and just kind of bend it one way. Oh, and that there is now a little bit too lean. So what I'm gonna do is just tweak it the other way again and this takes a little bit of practice. No. There we go. So what I'm looking for is this horn is not square along here and none of them seem to be like that. So this uh, scale should just be a, a perfect fit right here. So you see how it just barely fits there? And in the middle here, it binds up a little bit. So that is now correctly set. Now we come back to the electric choke. So what it wants us to do is set this according to the TSM one notch rich. Well, we don't know what one notch is. What we have to find is the null point from when this is no longer pulling open and this is no longer pushing closed. So I will take the screw here and I will loosen it again and as I start turning this lean I'm going to keep an eye on this plate here I don't think I can keep a nail in there while I'm doing this but I'm just going to keep an eye on it and with a screwdriver I'll be tapping the casting of the electric choke uh, and this is why I say make sure this is all clean beforehand because if this is binding at all it makes this last step here right quite difficult I just started to see it cracking open there. So I'm gonna turn it back a little bit, give it a tap, and I have to use my finger to push it closed, give it a tap. I'm just gonna watch that again as I slowly turn it, and about right right there. So I'm gonna tighten the screw, at this point here, we have now zeroed out the force of the diaphragm and the internal coil spring, which can be in different places depending on where you are in what climate. Like if you're working out in a cool garage, it'll be in one position slightly. If you're working out in the middle of summer in California, it could be in another location. So we just want to find that zero point, which is the average ambient temperature. So now we know our clearance is set correctly and we should be able to Verify that, yeah, it's still good. And now I can go with an X-Acto knife. And on the long line that we have in the casting, I will strike or scribe our mark. And from this point onwards, we can say that is our alignment mark. Now it wants us to go one notch rich. So once more, we'll turn this. And because turning counterclockwise leans it, 
and going clockwise enriches it. I'm just going to roll it one notch forward into the rich position. And I'm going to tighten my screws. And there we go. So at this point here, when you start the vehicle up cold, it'll do the initial pull off and it will have it set to the correct enrichment and lean out point. And as this begins to warm up, it immediately begins opening the plate until eventually it just completely unloads on this side. Now there is another adjustment for this linkage here. There is obviously an adjustment here for the fast idle cam as well. Those are not part of this overview. All I wanted to do was to tell you how exactly you set the electric choke. I hope this helps.